I must have been dreaming. It was a dream of long ago. I stare at the ceiling for a while, trying to recall the whole thing. I can't remember what it was about, though. What I do know is that the dream left me feeling at ease. I crawl out of bed and begin getting dressed. Looking at the clock, I realize that first period has already started. I grab my thin bag and head to the first floor. My father is already gone. I pass through the messy room and head to the entranceway. After I put on my shoes and lock the door behind me, I leave home. I walk down the usual path all alone. There is nobody wearing the same uniform as me around. Well, of course, first period has already started after all. I see this road empty more frequently than I see it filled with students wearing school uniforms. Maybe I should just ditch and hang somewhere. I'll just be sleeping anyway if I go to school. Fool. <laughs> Even so, since I'm wearing a uniform, I can't really go anywhere public. <laughs> Going to Sinohara's room to kill time wouldn't be a bad choice. <laughs> but hey, if I sleep in class, at least I'll be counted as present. <laughs> ah! Suddenly something hits me in the back. And it was a very intense impact at that. For an, in for an instant I can't breathe and my eyes flicker. My back feels like it is on fire. I turn around as I reach behind me to hold my back and there stands... <laughs> Sorry! You! Don't tell me you hit me with that! <laughs> Actually, I still am not very used to driving this. I just got my license last week after all. Of course I passed on my first try, so I bought myself a new bike. A new bike! What do you think? Cool, isn't it? Apologize sincerely before you start boasting. Huh? I did say sorry just now, didn't I? You call that being sincere? Show your sincerity in a, in a more tangible way. Go look up the word reparation in the dictionary. What are you talking about? It's your fault you're walking in the middle of the road. I'm a vulnerable pedestrian. You're going to get your license suspended for hurting someone. You're such a whiner. If you're so vulnerable, then walk along the edge of the street like a vulnerable pedestrian would. You picked a fight with someone stronger than you, and now that you lost, you're playing the victim? Don't be so petty. Hang on a minute. Why do I need to stand here and listen to her giving me crap? I wasn't trying to fight a bike. <laughs> Hell, she rammed into me from behind. I am 100% the victim here. <laughs> okay. What is it? I'll call the cops and tell them there's been an accident here. No matter the reason, you are definitely getting your license revoked. Have fun spending all day listening to some boring lecture at traffic school. If you even try to do that, I'll turn you into roadkill. Her eyes aren't laughing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I'm serious. <laughs> I bet. By the way, what are you doing here this late? Besides, isn't it against school rules to come by motorbike? It's because I'm late that I'm riding my bike. There aren't that many people around, I'm in a rush, and it's a breeze! Well, you're still late. No matter how fast you go, it doesn't matter in the end, right? It doesn't matter in the end. <laughs> if you think like such a sloth, you're going to waste your life away. Doesn't riding a bike to school because it's a breeze make you a sloth too? Vehicles are the fruit of human intelligence. They're the pinnacle of civilization. They only have a purpose of if you use them. What terrible reasoning. Then at least give me a ride to school. This bike only seats one. <laughs> Do I sound like Sunohara? <laughs> if I squeeze in, there will be room for two. What, could it be that you want to hug me? Are you saying it's okay to... <laughs> if you're okay with not being able to eat anything but rice porridge for lunch? Oh, I meant it will break... I will break your jaw if you try. I don't need you to spell it out for me. Okay, I'm going then. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I walk to the back of Kyo's bike and sit on the rear wing. Go. <laughs> Her helmet mercilessly hits my jaw. That hurts. Where the hell do you think you are sitting? If you break the wing, I'll break your nose! Didn't you say it's okay as long as I don't hug you? In that case, sit on the seat and go throw your hands up in the air. I'll get thrown off the bike. 
I won't go that fast. Then give me more room on the seat. <laughs> Sheesh. Get off the bike for a second. Fine. I slip off the rear wing and stand next to the bike. Alright, now make me some room. <laughs> hey, where the hell are you going? <laughs> That's so naive of you, you dummy. Kyo's abusive words fade into the distance as she rides away from me. The next time I see your bike, I'm sticking gum in its keyhole. Oh. The next time I see your bike, I'm sticking gum in its keyhole. With a screech, Kyo suddenly does a 180 in the distance. And charges this way. <laughs> Ow! If you do that, I'll jam chopsticks under your finger and... Oh my god. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> After glaring at me, Kyo turns her bike around and rides away once more. She sure can't take a joke. That sounded Dutch. <laughs> I take a break while glaring at the bike's tail light as it moves into the distance. It reminds me. Fujibayashi's fortune. I'll have an intense impact with a gentle girl. <laughs> Both my body and mind will be refreshed. God damn you, imbecile. Whoa. The bottom of the hill. Furukawa is there again, standing still as can be. Morning. Oh, good morning. What are you doing here again? I was waiting for you, Okazaki-san. You were waiting? Yes, I thought we could go to school together every morning from now on. Uh-huh. If that would bother you, then I won't, but... The school is right there, you know. You just have to climb this hill, that's all. Yes, but... She glances at the school gates. Climbing this hill. I guess it's something she still needs to work up the courage to do. So, I guess not then? She looks back at me, holding down her hair as it dances in the wind. If you wait for me, you'll be late for school every day, you know. That's okay. It's much better than not going at all. You should just go on your own, with or without me. Okay, I'll try. It's not like I might, though. Huh, I guess even a guy like me is able to help her. Funny, it almost feels a bit like a luxury to be in this position. That's why I start walking. Let's go. Okay. Her feet pitter-patter behind me. Don't you need to figure out what you'll be having for lunch today? No, I'll be alright. After all, we're going to school together. That's motivating in and, in and of itself. I see. In that case, let's go buy lunch together. You're just going to buy bread anyway, right? Yes. A little later. I look back and realize this was another odd promise I made to her. I ship them so much. Um, Okazaki-kun. Okay, yeah? With nothing in particular to do, I had just decided to lie down on my desk when Fujibayashi comes back to talk to me. Here! Oh, worksheets? Are these from homeroom? Yes. Thanks. I reach my hand out to get the worksheets from Fujibayashi, but otherwise stay lumped slumped over. In one fell swoop, I grab the worksheets and cram them into my desk. Do you need something else? Um, well... Oh. Yes? Uh, I gently sit upright and turn to face Fujibayashi. Your sister's no joke, you know. Uh, Onei-chan is... Yeah, she was late today, wasn't she? Yeah, Onechan has a hard time waking up. I met her on my way here. She was on a bi- <laughs> Huh? Is something the matter? No, it just felt like something hit my head. Huh? Whatever, anyway, this morning I was hit on the, ba on the back by Kyo with a bu- <laughs> Hmm? Okazaki kun yeah, sorry, with a butt. <laughs> with a butt. <laughs> a butt. <laughs> hey, it sounds like Okazaki's bye. Whoa, he swings both ways. What's that? Crap, he's looking this way. Hide your asses, he's gonna dig into them. Whoa. Alright, assholes, let's settle this in the restroom. He's at the restroom. Man, guess he's serious. Okazaki, come. 
Wait, Fujibayashi, this is a terrible misunderstanding. I... I heard there are those kind of people too. What I was trying to say was, Kyo hit me with a butt. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's a small quick thud on my forehead. Something came flying at me. It didn't really hurt, but I could feel the sharp impact ringing within my ears. Then it falls on my lap. It's an eraser. It seems the wider side got a clean hit on my forehead. It's also missing chunks. Were those tiny thuds I've been feeling pieces of this? Regardless, who the hell is it? As I stand up and yell, Kyo stumps into the classroom. She then mercilessly drags me out of the classroom by my necktie. What's the big idea? You! What do you think you're saying in the middle of the class? Huh? What else? That you ran me over with a bike? Ooh. She covers my mouth with her hand. Hey, are you trying to get me suspended? Huh? Why would I? As I raise my eyebrows, Kyo wraps around, around my neck and drags me toward her. She then whispers to me in a soft voice so that only I can hear. Since riding a bike to school is prohibited, I'll be a it'll be a huge pain if the teachers find out, you know? Then don't ride here in something so dangerous. What are you talking about? Now that I bought it, of course I'm going to want to use it. <laughs> Even if you say something so selfish. Anyhow, this thing about me riding a bike to school is absolutely a secret. And if I let it slip? Then I'm pulling your eyeballs out and sticking them up your nose. Just how can this girl can... How can this girl say something so terrifying without a second thought? Okay, now go back to your classroom and write it off somehow. Fine. I let out a sigh and returned to my classroom. Hey guys, actually 3 is Kyo Fujibayashi is by. <laughs> you! What the hell was that for? Well, I think I did a pretty fine job covering that up. Why would you say something like that? Well, if I didn't do that, I'd be the one who looked bad. But that's okay, things like that happen. Right back at you. What happens if people take it the wrong way? This is no joke! No joke? You're trying to tell me something? I didn't mean anything in particular by that. <laughs> anyway, you say that again and I'll pound you to death. <coughs> Alright. I click my tongue and return to the classroom. Sorry guys, I was just kidding. 3 is Kyo Fujibayashi actually likes girls more than guys. <laughs> Kyo pulls me away again. <laughs> you... You really want to die? Want me to strangle you for 20 minutes until I almost break your neck? Jeez, what should I say then? Just don't say another word and go back to your seat. <sighs> that sounds boring. What was that? <laughs> Nanny? Just talking to myself, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh... <gasps> Why am I yawning at this hour? I look at the desk in front of mine. The textbook on it is... <sighs> English grammar again. Sunohara so isn't around, so... I stand up and I look toward the door. <laughs> Our eyes meet. Uh, uh, where, where are you going? Uh, you know. Well, class is about to begin. I'm Japanese. I'm not going to use English for the rest of my life. Uh, but if you're absent during roll call, you'll have to take supplementary lessons. I don't have that many absences yet. My fortune said that something wonderful would happen during grammar class today, too. Something wonderful? Yes, something wonderful. W wonderful. Interesting. I think I'll try out whatever this wonderful thing you're talking about is. Yes. I sit down and wait for the bell to ring. The bell rings. Okay, time for a pop quiz. How <laughs> oh, wonderful indeed. It's lunch break, but Sunohara still hasn't shown up. If he were here, turning him down would be a pain anyway. I got lucky. 
I leave the classroom by myself. I want to say, she was in class B. I leave the classroom and look around the hallway. Furukawa is standing against the wall so that she won't get in the way of traffic. Our eyes meet. Her face breaks into a smile as she trots over. Okazaki-san! Are you okay? About what? Did you not have to go with that other person? Oh, yeah, he's fine. I see. That's good then. What other person? Why don't... <laughs> Why don't we go? Sure. We start walking side by side. You know, walking around school with a girl is seriously embarrassing. What? I casually look over at, over at the profile of Furukawa as we stroll. Then again, I guess people would be jealous of me more than anything. How old is this game? <laughs> hmm? What is it? Nothing. Or is Japan so old-fashioned? I don't know. As always, the front of the bread line is so crowded, it's difficult to even approach the display case. It looks like there's even more people here than usual. Yeah. Huh? A single male student rushes past Furukawa and dives straight into the billowing crowd. <laughs> <laughs> He's quickly swallowed up and lost to the sea of bodies. Why don't we go back? Nah, it's okay, I'll go buy something for you. Just tell me what you want and I'll get it. I'll be fine with Anpan. Come on, go for something more exciting. I mean, you can buy any one of those whenever you want. Pick something you can only get right now. Okay, if you really want to spoil me. Bring it on. Um, well... She balls both of her hands into fists. I'd like a piece of dual-colored bread. What's that? It's a single piece of bread that has both cream and chocolate in it. It's a very special magical piece of bread. She's really emphasizing the point. Uh-huh. Never knew they sold anything like that. Then again, I've never really been interested in sweet bread, so I guess I wouldn't know. Well, nevertheless, I'm heading out. Pray for my safe return. I give her a big thumbs up. May the gods watch so What? <laughs> what? May the gods watch over you. Furukawa puts both of her hands together by her chest theatrically. Okay. I wedge my body into a small space in the crowd. I then push forward by using my arms to shove any students blocking my path out of the way. As I'm doing this, I recognize the back of another student's head. Sunohara? He didn't even come to class, so why is he here? I grab his shoulder. Hey! What is it? Oh, Okazaki, what's up? What are you doing here, man? What else? I'm here to buy bread. Is there something going on today? It's not usually this crowded. Wait, you came in here totally oblivious? Unbelievable. Just look. I look to where Sunohara points and see an adver advertisement hanging from the ceiling. It says, new product, fillet... Fillet? A f fillet? A fish sandwich. 150 yen. I see. Now I get it. Everyone's been spreading all sorts of rumors about that thing since it was announced last week. Do you really need to sp I'm having trouble with his voice. Do you really need to spread rumors about a sandwich? What? Anyway, so can you explain to me what a fillet of, fillet of fish and sandwich is? I can't pronounce the word. Excuse me? Take a closer look. It's not fillet, it's fillet. Huh, he's right. The current prevailing theory is that you get to fill it to the brim with whatever fish you want, but I don't know. There's not telling, no telling how deep this rabbit hole goes. Actually, I'm almost certain that it's just a misspelling. Go! <laughs> Sunohara's shoulders are jerked down. My foot's stuck in the crowd! Save me, Okazaki! He reaches out his hand, but I pull back to avoid it. <laughs> Okazaki, I thought we were friends! Sorry, Sunohara. That was never how I saw it. <laughs> oh man, I don't dare to scream. My neighbors. He swallowed up and lost to the sea. I can't be standing around either. It's only getting more crowded as time passes. The mass of people feels like it's about to burst. 
Are you all that desperate to get a piece of misspelled bread? <laughs> I blindly charge forward. And then? I got it! In my hands are a piece of dual colored bread and a sandwich for myself. Nice. Thanks for waiting. Thank you very much! Were you okay? Yeah, I managed somehow. The school co-op is such a scary place. Yeah. Everyone must be so sick of studying that they're getting themselves worked up over a new piece of bread. We head to the courtyard for lunch. Our time there is quiet and peaceful, almost like my days at school up until now. I wonder if we feel so at peace around each other because we're both outsiders. It'd be mean to call her an outsider, though. I look to my side. She's intently eating her bread. She's so into it that it's funny. I assume this is how she always is, putting everything into whatever it is she's doing, even if that thing is simply eating lunch. She only ended up this way because of bad luck. Unlike me, Furukawa doesn't even notice me staring at her as she continues to eat her bread, seemingly unaware to the world around her. After a bit... All done! She folds up the bread's wrapping paper and puts it in her pocket. That was really delicious! Even if she as she talks, I, I keep looking at her face, sort of lost in thought. <gasps> Sorry, our eyes meet. Um, yeah? Could there be something on my mouth? No, you're good. So, what would you be looking at then? Hey, Furukawa? Yes? I think you're cute. Excuse me? <laughs> Partly because of just who you are at your core, you know? How you carry yourself, your demeanor, that kind of thing. I think that once people get to know you, they'll all like you. I have zero doubt that you'll be able to make plenty of friends. It makes me feel sad if someone tries to cheer me up when I wasn't even sad to begin with. What? No, this isn't me trying to tr cheer you up. I'm just sharing my thoughts, I guess. A first impression, let's say. Like, we've practically just met, right? So, you can take those words at face value. Hmm. Take them at face value. I grab her shoulders and tell her as if I'm giving instructions. That's a strange thing to say. Even if you ask that I believe you. You know, you're right. I quickly realized just how strange what I said actually is. It was so cute. <sighs> I sit back down. As I do, I meet my eye what? I meet eyes with a female student in the third floor windows of the school building, directly in front of me. Hey, try waving again. Smile while you do it though. I'm not doing that again. You do it, Okazaki san. Like I told you, I'm a guy. If I if I just spontaneously wave by myself, they think I'm think I'm a creeper. That's not true, Okazaki san. You're tall and cool, so so if you waved, I'm sure a lot of girls would flock to you. And then they'd push someone like me aside. Oh, you're right. If I did that, I wouldn't be able to hang out with you anymore. Never mind then. You shouldn't take what I said at face value. Listen, you. You little... What? I poke her on the head. I guess I missed a joke. <laughs> Furukawa laughs. Actually, no. It's not quite a laugh. She went as far as smiling, but... I look in the same direction as her. I find myself looking at the third floor window of the school building again. The shadows disappeared. Hey, Furukawa? Yes? Want to go to the club room? Yes, why don't we? Furukawa stands up and brushes the dirt off her skirt. How much time do we have? We have about 20 minutes until the first bell. Okay, let's use the time to make a flower that says th the club's looking for members. Okay. Furukawa nods vigorously, excitement building with each bob of her head. The two of us start writing things down with magic markers on a piece of office paper. We need to start by choosing a date for an open house, and we can tell people more about the club then. When should we make it? We won't be able to get anyone in the doors if it's too soon, so how about two weeks from now? 
Okay, if we say club activity start at the beginning of May, that would sound nice and clean. I can only hope things go that well. <laughs> it's done! Uh, don't you think it could use a little more something? Like what? Hmm, I think that what's missing is... A drawing? You're right! I think the poster would be cuter with one. So in that case, get drawing for Furukawa. Me? Who else is gonna do it? You! <laughs> Had I not gotten an F in art, that may be a possibility, but I did, so it's not. It's not one of my strong subjects either. Did you ever have to draw a self-portrait in middle of school? In middle school? <laughs> yeah, I did. I tried really hard to draw mine, but the teacher came up to me and told me the curry I was drawing looked delicious. <laughs> Aww. But... Middle school, so this is not mid- This is high school then. I think I'm confused. Oh well. Hey, mine told me that the catcher's mitt was I was drawing looked really sturdy. <laughs> curry and a catcher's mitt. I wonder which one of those is worse. My teacher e oh, <laughs> my teacher even complimented me for being so sure to draw the pickles on the side. <laughs> Mine went out of his way to call it a catcher's mitt. Why that? Why that and not a regular baseball glove? That's what I want to know. Should I go get someone who's good at drawing? I stand up, tired of the unproductive dispute for having. Ah, uh, please wait a moment. Huh? I'll just draw it. I'm the club president after all. Yeah, that would be best. I sit back down. What should I draw? Furukawa asks me with markers in her hands. Think of something yourself. Hmm. What are you good at drawing? I wonder. Curry? <laughs> no! She totally shut me down there. It must really be an awful memory for her. Could I draw something simple? If that's okay, then there's one thing I'm good at drawing. Sure, as long as it's cute. It's super cute! As soon as she finishes speaking, her hand begins moving as she hums a song. It's a melody I've heard somewhere before. I can't remember what it is, though. Curious, I take a look at what she, she's putting down. I see a small circle with a face on it. Just as she finishes drawing one, she draws more and more of the same thing. The club recruitment notice quickly finds itself occupied by strange creatures. It's done! She proudly shows me the flyer. Uh, the whole poster is practically covered in mysterious creatures. What are you, some kind of idiot? Sorry? Look, you can't even read the text. You're right, it's become very hard to read. Why'd you draw all these bizarre creatures on here? They're not bizarre. They're very famous. What are they? The Big Dango Family. The Big Dango Family? It's the title of a song that became a huge hit a while back. I think it was used in a kid's show. Oh, so that's the melody she was humming just now was. Anyone in Japan would know the song. The Big Dango Family is a big family. That's why there's so many of them. Let me be straight up with you, Furukawa. Yes? You're really not cut out for this. Uh, the Big Dango family? How long ago was that? It's already dead and forgotten. What? It doesn't matter whether it's old or not. Something that's cute is always cute, regardless of when you look at it. I'll admit that this might be cute, but it's about... It's out of fashion. You're really out of touch with what's popular, aren't you? Am I? There's... <laughs> they're still cute to me. Really? Well... I'm glad to hear it. I start to rub my temples. Looking at what she's come up with, we might be better off if I just drew my catcher's mitt. <laughs> Any regular person who sees this is going to be repelled by it. It'd be one thing if she drew this as a joke, but she's serious about it. So, no big dango family? Furukawa's spirits begin to plummet as she watches my reaction. This isn't good. I can't let her sink into an utter pit of despair. I have to do something. Well, I guess it's not bad. But you said it yourself. I'm not cut out for this. 
Yes, but that doesn't mean that the big Dango family isn't cut out for the drama club. This is starting to require some mental gymnastics. Really? I don't know how to feel now. She doesn't seem particularly sold on the idea, but I do seem to have salvaged the situation. Hmm. As I stare at the flyer, I start to think that it actually shows what kind of person Furukawa, the club president, is. On that sense, in that sense, maybe it's a lot better than a flyer adorned with lies. In any case, we're done making our notice. It's got some uh, spice to it. All's well that ends well. After my strained attempt to wrap things up, I grab the piece of paper and stand. Where are you going? To the co copier? Should I? Should make a bunch and go around putting them up after school. I think that's the most we could do today. Oh, okay. After that, we use the copier in the teacher's room, then head back. I return to class to find Sunohara with his face buried in the desk in front of him. It's probably because he wasn't able to buy whatever what that new item on the lunch menu was. I decide to leave him be. Sunohara is still dejected if an after class is end, so I leave without him. I head to the drama club room. I didn't come here in any particular rush, but I don't see Furuka. What's she doing? She does seem pretty slow. I wait, but she doesn't show. Bored, I scribble on the edge of the blackboard. Day duty Nagisa Furukawa. I finish scribbling and wait a while longer, but she's still nowhere to be seen. Maybe something happened. I start to feel a little worried. She's hopeless. Nah. <laughs> Sad. Don't tell me that she accident accidentally went to the class next door or something. Uh, I could see her doing that too. She probably went off somewhere else. I take a peek inside. Seems like no one's around. I open the door. <clears throat> I assumed the door the room would be empty. But a young female student sits near the windows. <laughs> the sunlight pouring in prevents me from getting a clear look at her face, leaving only her silhouette visible. She's carving a block of wood with a knife. <laughs> Her concentration seems to have erased my existence completely from her senses. There's something irresistibly cute about the way she's working so hard on it. For a while, I just stand there, watching. <gasps> her hands stop as she fi finally notices my presence. Her eyes meet mine. She freezes. What's wrong? Suddenly she jumps up and runs toward a corner of the room. She reminds me of a cat caught trying to steal food. Except a cat probably wouldn't be clutching a knife the whole time. Note to self, don't surprise the girl with a knife. You may end up getting stabbed. <laughs> Holding her ground, she cautiously watches my every move still as can be. I find it funny wondering if she's trying to hide by standing perfectly still. Better yet, she's in the corner of the room, effectively the most visible spot in the whole place. Well then, what should I do now? Say, so, is this the art club's room? Uh, hey, I'm talking to you. She reluctantly points a finger at herself and tilts her head to the side. Yeah, you! As if there's anyone else here. She raises her index finger. Maybe she wants me to repeat the question? Is this the art club's room? Still standing tightly in the corner, she shakes her head nervously. Oh right, other club members would be here if it was. So, do you just skip too many art classes and end up with piles of homework? Something like that? She shakes her head again. Then it's just a hobby? She shakes her head again. Then just what on earth are you doing here? Sorry, <laughs> I keep having to burp. <clears throat> Do you mean this? Oh, her voice. She shows me the wooden block she was working on, holding it in front of her chest. Yeah, that. This is a favorite thing. 
<laughs> Suddenly she has a euphoric look on her face. It's as if she's lost in a reverie, dreaming up something really fabulous. <laughs> she's so full of openings. With a few steps, I quickly close the distance between the two of us and proceed to take the knife from her hand. <gasps> Relax, I'll give it back. Isn't it kind of dangerous using a knife like this? Now that I'm closer, I can see a bandage covering one of her hands. <gasps> from the intense look she's giving me, I can tell she wants her knife back. You know, you should stop using this thing. What? Your hand, I can tell it's a mess. Is carving wood really worth cutting yourself up like that? It's a personal thing. It's none of your concern. Give it back. Doesn't your hand hurt though? No. Liar. This is just as a precautionary thing. Well then, shake my hand. Okay. I put a bit of strength into my grip. Uh. In a flash, she pushes me away and our distance reverts back to what it was before I took the knife. She's squatting down in the opposite corner now. It looks like that really hurt. A few moments pass. That didn't hurt. On the verge of tears, she stands back in front of me. Give it back. Can we shake hands again? No. <laughs> Why? We've already shaken once, so that's enough. A handshake is not something you do more than once per, per time. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. In that case, how about a high five? High five? You know, like in sports, when a player scores a point or something, their teammate raises a hand and they clap them together in the air. We haven't scored any points. Okay, then let's pretend we did. Okay, here goes. I awkwardly take a free throw pose and toss the air ball toward an imaginary basket. And it's good! Come on, raise your hand! Okay! <laughs> I mean, it's less of a high five and more of just a straight up slap, really. Once again, she pushes me away and runs toward the opposite corner. It should have hurt more than the handshake. We were literally hitting each other's hand. A few moments pass. That didn't hurt. She stood before me with trails of tears on her face. Give it back. Like a handshake, we can do a high five as many times as we like. And it's in there. Now raise your hand. Okay. There she goes again. <laughs> That's why I've been telling you, stop carving until your hand's completely healed. I put the knife into my pocket. Give it back! She just won't give up. What if someone were trying to enjoy their activi club activities in peace nearby? If something happens to you in here, do you know how much trouble that it cost them? There shouldn't be anyone around here. Club season's coming up. People are going to start using their rooms around here. That's why you should be patient until your injury heals. Besides, you can't make a decent carving with your hand in that condition, right? I don't know why you're pushing yourself so hard, but it'd be better if the final product is in perfect condition, right? But... There's not enough time to wait until it's healed. The teacher who gave you this assignment must be a real tyrant. No, this is a personal project. Then there's no problem, just give your hand a rest for a bit. With that said, I leave the classroom. Aww. From the corridor, I look back into the classroom. She's still standing there looking down helplessly on her half-finished work of art. Her tears are about to burst out. Maybe that was a bit too mean? But only an idiot would try to carve with a hand like that. You should take better care of your body. Overworking an injury could lead to permanent damage that you'll regret the rest of your life. That's sad. Kind of foreshadowing. I understand that better than anyone. <laughs> Rotating my shoulder, I look out the window. Naturally, my eyes wander gradually lower. And there she is. <sighs> What's she doing? Does she think it's lunch or something? I wouldn't mind it past her. What? I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't put it past her. Oh. Like that would be likable? Never mind. I climb down the stairs and head to the courtyard. She's sitting in our usual lunch pot. I approach her. Hey, you know it's no lunch break. Why are you what are you doing here? Furukawa is holding a bamboo broom. 
Spinning its handle around in her hand, she sits without a word. From the looks of it, she's down again. What's wrong? Did something happen? I sit next to her. <laughs> Sand gets caught in the bamboo broom's tips as she continues spinning it in front of her feet. So it's your turn on class cleaning duty, huh? Yes. She finally answers. So what's wrong? Why aren't you cleaning? I was. You were, were you? So why'd you stop? Um, well, it's because... She thinks for a bit. Then she quickly stands up. It's nothing I'd need to talk to you about, Okazaki-san. After saying that, she starts to walk off. Hey, hold on a second. I get up too and follow after her. I don't get you, you know that? You're not gonna treat me like a bad guy? No, Okazaki-san, you're a good person. You don't have to go so far as to call me a good person, but I'm not the kind of person who'd harm you, right? That's right. They can just tell me what's wrong, like you always do. I'm dragging you into something, Okazaki-san, and it's not very fun. I'm wasting your time and I don't want that to happen. That's not true, it's plenty fun. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Furukawa stops, then starts spinning the broom handle again where she stands. I just gaze at her. All of a sudden, I feel uncomfortable. I feel another me, one that's less attached to the situation, watching us as this takes place. What am I doing? I lose track of time for just a moment. As this happens, Furukawa just looks down at the ground, ever, ever silent. For now, I need to focus on cheering her up. Food, that's right, food. I start thinking of different kinds of food. What is it? What is that she likes? The big Dango family? Back when the song was popular, every supermarket you walked into had huge packs of Dango made to look like those characters. Furukawa, you like Dango, don't you? Yes. Then say the words, big Dango family for me. Use that to cheer yourself up. Do you think some stores still sell the Big Dango family? Probably, but don't worry about that right now. So just say the words and use them as your mantra. Furukawa closes her eyes and then... Big Dango family! She says the words with conviction. So do you feel more calm? Yes. After she opens her eyes, she seems a little bit more positive, relaxed. Like whatever was bothering her loosened its grip a bit. You can tell me what happened later. For now, just go do what you need to do. Okay. She grabs the broom in her hands and walks off. The big Dango family seems to have had a miraculous effect on her. I watch her as she fades out of view. Later on, Furukawa and I go around posting flyers on billboards around school. Club recruitment, a full month late. Since the cutoff period for most clubs has already come and gone though, our announcement stands out on its own. Finally, we place a flyer on the last remaining billboard. I stand there and stare at it for a moment, moved. Furukawa is next to me, still a little lethargic. Le lethargic? Lethargic. <laughs> well, <laughs> numb, I guess. I want to go buy a big dango family and head home? I move away from the billboard and try to cheer her up. Mind if I ask you something? Yes. Just theoretically. Yes? Theoretically, if the store didn't have a big dango family, what would you do? <laughs> what? She looks at me, her eyes are ready to gush like a near broken dam. Sorry, just messing around. <laughs> On the way home, we go by the two supermarkets. Neither of them have a big dango family. Furukawa looks like she's on the verge of tears again. I don't know what happened while she was on cleaning duty, but she used the idea of the big dango family as encouragement to get past whatever was distressing her. So if she can't get one, she'll be back to acting like she was earlier. If she can't get one. I have to get one, by any means necessary. It's an old reference. Of course they wouldn't have any. 
I doubt anyone would want a big Dango family these days. Furukawa's give up on meter is hitting critical mass, I can tell. Hold on a second. I turn my back to her and dig through my bag. I guess I don't have a choice. Furukawa? I turn back around to her and say her name. Yes? She looks utterly heartbroken. You go home, I'll manage to do something about that big Dango family. Really? If I promise, will that make you happy? Yes, it would. Okay, then go home and stick it out for now. But don't ask another question. I feel like I'm putting you through a lot of trouble. It's fine, just close that trap and head home. Mm. Yes. She nods a little uncertain, and I can tell, but turns on her heel nonetheless and begins to walk off sluggishly. Don't cry on the way home either. With those as my parting words, I do a 180 as well. <coughs> I go back to the supermarket in order to buy them out of Dango. Dango. Phew. God, that was heavy. <laughs> that sounded like no emotion. <laughs> that was heavy. I place the distended supermarket bag on the floor, then sit down on it myself. <coughs> I take the dango filled packs out of the bag and break open their seals. What kind of faces did they have again? <laughs> again. I hold up one of the dango as I ponder. I want to say it was like this. I use the red food coloring and strips of bamboo I also bought to draw faces on the dango. Hmm. It came up pretty good. Doing this really does make me feel a bit silly though, that's for sure. <coughs> I want to say that the big Dango family had about a hundred members, and now I'm supposed to make all of them. <sighs> but I have to do it, or else she'll get depressed again. Dot dot, dot dot. I draw on each one with the food coloring. Before I know it, an hour has passed. I'm nearly finished, however. Phew. Just as I let out an exhale, I notice how dry my throat is. It's so bad I can barely swallow. Talk about focus. Maybe I'm cut out for this kind of simple labor. I stand up to get a drink of water. As I come back to my room, I find my father there. The moment I see him, a feeling of uneasiness and panic begins to well up. I have a bad feeling about this. What are you doing? I managed to start by saying that much. Isn't this that, uh... You know. He grabs one of the dango with a face on it and grins. That's it. The big dango family. That's the name I haven't heard in a while. I hold my tongue as I keep still in the entrance. So, what are you going to do with these? Hey, Tomayaka. I'm giving them to someone. I see. To a friend? Sure. Will you let me help in that case? Why? If it's for one of your friends, Tomoyaka, then I want to help you out. It might even turn into a chance for us to talk. I wish he'd just stop. Is this some sort of highly planned way of irritating me? Why would my father need to talk to a friend I brought over? Aren't you my father? Are you just a conversation partner? Is that all you are? Or are you trying to take the friend I'm bringing over and involve them in this too? I want to ask him these questions, and I want him to have answers. I'm good at this kind of things. My father grabs one of the bamboo sticks. Stop it! I rush over and pull his arm away. My father looks up at my face, equal parts confused and shocked. Just stop it. This doesn't have anything to do with you. I use the best words I can for the situation. He hangs his head, just as I expected him to. But even so, he still looks like he's trying to spite me. He looks like someone who's just hurt a friend, not his own child. I begin to frantically gather the dango that are spread out across the table. I stuff them into the supermarket bag and leave the room without so much as another glance at my father. I can't stand it anymore. There isn't a place for me here. Not for the real me. If I stayed, I'd have to be a shadow of my true self. I don't want to do that. I'm done. Done, damn it. 
My breath is getting heavy. My lungs burn, starved for oxygen. My entire body is assaulted by an intense feeling of fatigue. I don't even know what it must look like to see me running. I'd come all the way here before even realizing that I'd practically sprinted down the street. Uh, Furukawa is standing directly in front of me. Furukawa. I direct myself toward her with shaky footsteps. Furukawa. I repeat her name as I call out to her. Yes, she replies, but I'm not able to say anything. What is it that I wanted to do? Huh? She tilts her head to the side. I stand there, breathless. Are you tired? No, not really. Um, what's that? The question finally causes me to remember it. The supermarket bag that I'm carrying in my hand, that is. Oh, this? You can have it. Furukawa takes it and peeks inside. It should be packed full of dango with little faces on them. Wow, the big dango family! Yep, that's right. It really is a big family. Yep, one big family. I wish I could be part of it too. Yeah, well, why don't you ask them to join? <laughs> Furukawa has a big smile plastered across her face as she continues to look keenly inside the bag. When I see her do this, I start to regain my composure before I know it. Is that like a cycle? She gets... Like, she gets motivated because of the food he brings her, and he gets motivated because of her face when he brings her food. <laughs> that would be a nice life. Constantly circling that. After that, the two of us stay in the park for a while. We sit down on a bench and stare out at the empty swings. Everyone called me Curry Castle for a while after that. Huh? I'm surprised by her sudden remark. My self-portrait, I mean. Oh, what you were talking about this afternoon. They made me play catcher more often after that. It sounds like self-portraits were a disaster for both of us. You got that right. Drawing's never been... What? Oh, drawing's never been something I could do. Not well, anyway, obviously. Yeah, same here. I've always been so clumsy and awkward. I used to be teased for that a lot. And I still am. Oh, what's with the burps? <laughs> Sorry. I peer at Furukawa's face. She's pressing against her chest with both of her hands, as if she's trying to tolerate some sort of pain. By the time I noticed, I was all alone. I quickly realize that she's talking about what happened after school. Even though we weren't done cleaning yet, I was all alone in the courtyard. Oh. She pulls me back up. No, that's not the right way to put it. All she did was smile, after all. But seeing her just do that was enough to bring me back to my senses. You know, in that case, is there something I can do for her to show my gratitude? If there's even a single thing, then maybe it wouldn't be so bad for us to be together. If you're just gonna be crying all alone otherwise, call me over. That way you won't have to be alone. I wouldn't do that because... Well, that would cause trouble for you, Okazaki-san. That's not it, Furukawa. I want to be there. You wouldn't be causing me any trouble at all. There's no reason for you to act that considerate when it comes to me. It's not a problem, I'm bored myself anyway. <gasps> okay. If I'm ever about to cry, I'll call for you. Alright, you do that. But I'll try hard so that I won't have to. Yeah, that's more important too. Yes? But if you didn't, it'd feel kind of sad and lonely. No, but I guess that'd be best. That would mean she's trying her hardest. I'm starting to confuse myself. If I didn't call for you, then what? Huh? Would it be boring? Uh, yeah, it'd be boring. In that case, even if I do manage to try hard, I still might call for you. Would that be okay? Sure, that'd be fine. I'd get bored otherwise. Yes. Just about the time my stomach starts to growl, I see two shadowy figures approach from the direction of Furukawa's home. 
I don't have to see their faces to know they're her parents. Nagisa, isn't it about time to come home? <laughs> so, I greet them. Oh, if it isn't Cosmo Saito. Oh, Unif Universe Tarasan. Neither one of them get a single part of either of my names right. It's Okazaki-san, Mama Dead. Whoa. That's right, you're the guy with the lame name. So you came over to play again? Uh, well... If you're a man, you gotta take her by force. Uh, what? But if, even if you tried, I wouldn't let you. Akio-san, that's not what any of us are talking about. Oops, I must have jumped to the conclusion, sorry. With a leap like that, you could compete in the Olympics. I get the feeling that no matter how long I know this man, the two of us are never going to have a proper conversation. Okazaki-san, please come over to our house. That's right, don't come out here and meet our lover in secret like this. Would you like to? Or would your parents be worried if you're out any later? This... <laughs> I think I said that totally in the wrong way, but okay. That's not a problem, but... Furukawa saved me today, so... I'm gonna head home. I make my decision. Oh, okay. Then get out of here. Get out of here. I don't know what that's from. I, uh, <laughs> I see. Well, that's too bad. Please come by again tomorrow. Huh. See you, Furukawa. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I can't do them all at once. All three of them answer. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's not so nice. Wait, oh, well. you weren't talking to me? And what the hell am I doing replying normally to a kid who's being that casual to me, huh? Starting tomorrow, you call me Akio Sama, punk? <laughs> no, no, Akio san. That's Akio Sama. Okay, Akio Sama. <laughs> this family really is something. Good night, Okazaki san. I look at Furukawa's smile until it embeds itself into my mind's eye, then head back home for the night. Next, I see a floor. I'm staring straight at it. What was it? I feel like I was in the middle of something. I move my head up to change views. I see her. The girl that's been watching me. Her hand extends to me. I reach my own hand out toward it. Our hands overlap. While I can't feel anything, I still know they're together. As this happens, I realize something. I really have been born into this world. I've ended up existing after all. She can touch me. It's a sad world, but she's kind. When I touch her hand, both sadness and kindness fill my heart at the same time. I was born into this place because I saw it her, sacrificing my life in a new world, the happiness I could have had, and everything else. She pulls my hand up so that I can stand, and then leaves my side again. When she's a few steps ahead of me, she claps her hands. I begin walking toward her. That's right, I was pr practicing walking. That's what I was doing before. My memory is sluggish. I can't remember anything without working to do so. She's clapping her hands still. I should go. But my legs don't move the way I want them to. I fall forward yet again. But even so, she takes my hand once more and pulls me to my feet. How many times have I tried to walk? Finally, I manage to reach her. She holds my body, no more than half the height of hers, in her arms. You did a good job. Warmth. This world's one source of warmth. The warmth that I sought, though my body of scrap can't feel the warmth of hers. I look up at her face. There are so many things I want to ask her. 
but I have no mouth so I can speak. I turn my face to the window. A light is constantly shining in through it. I want to see the outside world. I want to see the end of the world for myself without my with my own eyes.